What's going on guys? This is Tyler back again with another video. Thank you for checking out this channel. Whether you are a collector, flipper, or investor, this is the place to be for all of your sports card information needs, especially when it comes to grading news. I'm going to jump into the shiny, beautiful Otani that you just saw and all the cards that I'm going to get graded at the National Collectors Convention that is coming up this weekend. And I'm going to really show you my process for what I determined into, in terms of actually selecting cards and then grading them for the National. But before we do, I've got to show you guys who is actually going to be at the National and who is going to be grading cards. So here I have all the different companies that are going to be at the National. PSA, Beckett, CSG. SGC is not grading, so I don't have them picked up, um, uh, pulled up. And then HGA it hasn't been communicated what they're actually going to be doing. So I honestly don't know. I, I wouldn't mind giving them a try. Keep in mind, guys, I'm only going to be there Saturday and Sunday. I can't get there earlier. I have way too many commitments that are taking place, um, and I can't escape those commitments. So I really don't know if the strategy that I'm going to outline to you guys is going to work out, but I'm going to show you guys all the cards I'm going to get graded, including that beautiful Otani that you just saw that is absolutely perfect. It is immaculate. It is so, so crisp. But... We are going to show you guys what the fees are and really what process and what strategies you guys should be doing in order to beat the line because I feel like my strategy is not going to work. So we have PSA pulled up. They are going to be there, obviously. Every single one of these companies is saying fill out your forms online. Do not show up with a bunch of cards and no paperwork. Show up with your paperwork. So that is one thing to keep note of. Uh, definitely make sure that you have your paperwork in play. This is going to be very expensive, and that's why I'm going to be curious to see how many of these cards are actually going to get graded at the show, because these are fees that we have never seen. This is my first show. I've never been to a show before, so um, I've always heard that the lines get really, really busy um, at the beginning of the day, and, and for the most part, the grading queue fills up. So if you don't get there early and submit early historically you wouldn't have got a place in line but with these fees being what they are where i'm hopeful that i'll be able to submit some things saturday whenever i get there i'm gonna be getting there friday night um but uh hopefully i can drop some cards off saturday and they'll still be accepted if not i guess i'll just go shopping at the show it's gonna be the biggest show in the world so all right psa is gonna be there 250 dollars fee for cards up to five thousand dollars end of show is whenever you get it back i don't know if that means end of uh, saturday or sunday end of show is sunday um but i know that they're not accepting cards on sunday so i don't know if they're closing up shop i really don't know what that means um i think it does mean sunday just looking at these uh references to sunday here so i'm, I'm thinking that it's sunday if you have something that goes up to ten thousand dollars we're looking at $600 fee. That is insane. All right, let's look at this uh, premium pricing because I have a card that I may have that will likely fit in one of these categories. And so it's about a two hour turnaround time. Gosh, two hours before close and Sunday. Oh, so I guess I can submit some of these on Sunday. So if you have something super expensive, it sounds like they'll actually grade this uh, um, on Sunday. So the cheapest option to get graded on Sunday is a thousand dollars so Saturday no go not good all right so two hundred fifty dollars up to ten thousand really depending on what your card is um, again have all your paperwork in place a minimum two hundred and fifty dollars have to be submitted by 12 p.m. I would encourage everybody to get that submitted on Thursday or Friday if you can if we go over to Beckett, so Beckett will be there and they are going to be grading some cards. That sounds awesome, right? So if we go down here, this is one of the cool things of the strategy or one of the strategies I wanted to do. And it sounds like I'm not going to have time for this, which really, really sucks. So what I wanted to do is RCR some of these cards, see what they would grade. Um, if they were gradable... Uh, and it, I was happy with the grade that they got an RCR. I may get them encapsulated in a Beckett holder. If they didn't grade well, um, I would have to think about it. And I, and I have to really think about like what I wanted to get graded and whether or not I want to try PSA. So RCR, $50, no subgrades, $75 per card, subgrades added to modern cards. Uh, so we have to, again, have these submitted 12 p.m. Oh, so if you want... Uh, return by the end of the day, you can actually pay a little bit higher. Um, you have to be; these have to be submitted uh, before 12 p.m. Express, you get those done in two hours, 200 and 300 dollars, depending on if you want subgrades or not. 
on uh, site encapsulation, we're looking at $150 for modern with no subgrades, $250 if you want subgrades for vintage and modern. End of the day, it's $300 and $500, then Express $600 and $1,000. If you want to have something recased, it's $50. Uh, again, they're saying turnaround times are very subjective. Uh, it is very possible the the lines for everything for encapsulation may be fully slammed for the first day. Uh, really, I don't, I'm not really sure how, how this is going to work. CSG sort of alludes to this in their uh, grading um, recommendation. So on-site grading for sports cards will be offered Wednesday through Saturday, so no Sunday, for... Uh, walkthrough, walkthrough, or CSGs and limited walkthrough, walkthrough, express, standard, uh, as well as crossover, reholder, and high value reholder. Subgrades, autograph grades, pedigrees are also available uh, by request at CSG's regular pricing. On site grading submissions are accepted on a first come, first serve basis, space is limited, and attendees are encouraged to submit at the start of the show. You will be able to check your CSG account to see when your submission is ready to pick up. If CSG needs to cut off on-site grading, submissions early, submissions will be ex still be accepted for CSG to grade at the headquarters for at its normal fees and turnarounds. Uh, so it says that you can look on here to see where the fees are. You have to go through this online submission form thing. Honestly, I really don't want to go through all of this. Um, how to prepare, blah, 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 blah. Because I don't think that they're actually showing how much this costs at the national. You have to actually go through and click through it. And I, I don't really want to do that. I think that I'd read on the board, forums it's around $50 a card, maybe. Um, so that's probably what I'm expecting is the cheapest rate. Uh, CSG uh, is probably not going to be something I'm going to do. All right, guys, so we are done showing you all who is going to be here, PSA, Beckett, and CSG. I expect these lines to be packed. I will be very happy if I get any of my cards graded. Um, really hope that I get a chance to get them graded, but now I'm going to show you guys what I'm taking to the National uh, to get graded. I'm also bringing a lot of my other cards with me just to see if anybody wants to wheel and deal. I don't know if I'm really wanting to part with anything, but if anybody wants to make me offers and if I come across something I want and I'm going to start wheeling and dealing. So uh, let's show you guys what those cards are. All right, guys. You all saw this beautiful 2018 Topps Chrome Orange Refractor Shohei Otani variation. This guy, I'm not showing you guys a ton of clips of just because this card is so freaking beautiful. I just took it out and put it right back into a card saver to send off. That card's probably going to be between five and $10,000 depending on how it grades. Uh, if it's gym net, that is. Next up, 2018 Topps Chrome X-Fractor. This card sells for right above $1,000 raw, so definitely worth $250 to send it off. Don't really see any issues with it. You all can see that the surface is just beautifully crisp. Next, I have two of these. This is the 2018 Topps Chrome Update HMT32 Batting Stance. Refractor number two, 250. You all saw in my videos, I've had four of these get graded by SGC, all coming back tens. This one uh, actually doesn't look like it's going to be as nice as the other ones. Uh, this copy, I don't know if you all can see, but it does look like it has a very, very, very minor surface mark at the very top above the helmet, uh, a surface line. The second one does look a little bit better in my opinion. Um, so my strategy was one of these I was going to send off to do raw card review, and if it came back Jim, have Beckett encapsulate it. That may or may not be an option, so I may just do both of these to PSA because PSA 10s of this card are selling for uh, right at you know two thousand dollars. So you know if both of them you know one hits ten, one hits a nine, the ten is definitely going to pay for the nine. So makes sense to just go ahead and roll the dice and get these guys graded um, as it would pay definitely pay for it. Um, you can see the back of the card. So looking to see uh, what the edges look like, just because it looked like there was an edge nick on one of these. Maybe that was another reason why I was thinking to RCR one of these. So. Um, yeah, that's what I'm investigating there. This card, uh, really going to be curious how they grade this. This is the Silver Pack Batting Stance. PSA 10s of this are right around $1,200. Uh, surface looks clean uh, for the most part. It has a very, very faint, very faint uh, print line right above his bat at the top of the card. Centering looks perfect. Corners and edges look great. I'm purposely not showing you guys the back because... I'm holding the camera in my hand and I'm only I'm holding the card in my hand and I'm not trying to manipulate the card all that much I'm trying to do these in just very smooth uh, transitions 
Next up is the Topps Update US1 SSP Batting Stance. This card is beautiful, beautiful. You can see that bottom left corner, the light kind of flicks up on it a little bit, so I'm investigating here just to see if this is a nicked corner or not. Kind of looks like this, that's just how the corners are cut on this. It does not look like a corner ding. This card is beautiful. Surface is beautiful. I did have to clean a spot off the surface, believe it or not, this being flagship. Uh, corners, everything look beautiful. PSA 10s of this are around 2000 I think this is very cheap because this is the, one of the lowest pop flagship Otanis that you can buy. And it's a batting image, which to me, that is my preference. I prefer batting over pitching variations. So next up, uh, we have a Mega Box 2017 Bowman Chrome Mega Box. This card is beautiful. I'm not showing a lot of this just because there's not a lot to inspect. I immediately noticed this card was darn near flawless, so I put it in its card saver and it will definitely be sent going to PSA uh, for the $250 fee, assuming it's still open. Next up, Bowman Chrome uh, Variation. This card is unbelievable. Dead centered, corners look great. If anything, there's a minor surface spec uh, that should not be something to hold it back from a PSA 10. PSA 10s of this card are unbelievably high. And next, I have the base card here. I actually had six copies of this. This is my best copy, guys. I'm not sending all six. You know, the base card of this right now is selling above a thousand dollars. You know, PSA tens are a thousand twelve hundred. Last a couple weeks ago, they were as high as two thousand. Um, so I, I paid roughly a hundred dollars a piece for these, send them off to get graded for 250. Uh, you know, if I can have a thousand dollar card, that's great. Again, this is my best copy. It looks like there's little surface um, spots there on the card as I'm, I'm showing you guys. That's part of the card. It is not an issue with the surface. Um, centering on this looks absolutely great. Corners, edges, beautiful. This card should be a PSA 10 along with the other variation. Next up, have a Zion Revolution autograph. Uh, as you all may or may not know, I've graded two of these and they did not grade Jim Mint through Beckett. Um, so looking at this card, it's very difficult to gauge how this card is gonna be graded. Um, the front looks very, very sharp, right? The corners are very clean, surface is smooth. Uh, you know, centering is the centering, which I've got 9.5 on the centerings for both of the ones I've submitted. The back is the issue with this card. One, Zion dropped these, or somebody dropped these when packaging them. So I only bought the cards that did not have that damaged corner. But even with that, these cards are incredibly difficult to find, even if you don't have the damaged corner. But looking at this, this card does look very clean. It looks cleaner than the other two that I had graded that came back nines. So I'm really not sure what to do with this. I don't know if I want to spend $250 to get it graded or if I want to RCR it. I would rather RCR it because I don't want to pay $250 to figure out this is a PSA 9. And then uh, I've pretty much destroyed my ROI. Next up, guys, holy moly. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. I was hoping this card would look gorgeous whenever I took it out of its mag case, and it is, in fact, gorgeous. It is a gold standard uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo full signature on-card autograph jersey. Uh, paid right around $2,500 for this card, you know, a couple months ago. Um, you know, I'd sold a huge Giannis card, which I've not told the channel about, um, that I'm actually disappointed that I sold, but now I have this, which makes me a little bit less sad. Uh, this card is beautiful. You can see in the light here with that, that top edge where the black is, I'm looking at it in the light because I'm trying to see if that's a raised edge, but it looks like that's just how the card is cut. Corners on this are immaculate, surface is immaculate, centering is immaculate. For a thick card like this, I mean, PSA 10s of this are gonna be pushing five figs, PSA 9s are probably in the three to four range. So I'm torn. I don't know if I want to Beckett this or if I want to PSA it. So uh, really not sure. Not sure what I want to do with that card, but it will be getting graded by somebody. Next is this Luka Doncic up and coming. For those of you who watch the channel, I've graded this card. It's come back a PSA 10 previously. This card looks just as good as that one. Uh, big issue with these cards uh, are the surface because Contenders just for some reason just does a terrible job at cleaning or having clean cards. The back also had some problems. The back had some gunk on it that really needed to be cleaned up. Um, didn't mess around too much with it, but I think this is a strong PSA 10 candidate. 
Next up, uh, this is Vlad Guerrero uh, Mystery Redemption NNO autograph. This is his flagship autograph on card rookie, still in sticker. Uh, have not taken it out, uh, will not take it out because the card looks perfect. Um, usually these cards, the only thing you have to worry about is the surface whenever it's an uncirculated card like this. And for flagship, I trust that Fatty Fat, uh, uh, that Fatty Boy, Fat Boy, uh, wasn't eating any mama's cooking when we were signing these. So I'm assuming that these cards are going to be clean because the corners look great, edges look great, centering looks great. Um, this card should be a good PSA 10 candidate. Next up, we're going to look at a borderline candidate. I really want to beck at this card. So this is Justin Herbert, uh, Chronicles Prism Black. Uh, this is the red prism number 299 uh, autograph. Uh, this card's really going to make or break my Herbert purchases because I did absolutely terrible buying Justin Herbert uh, Chronicles card. So, um, card looks pretty good. If anything, it's a little bit off-centered. Um, corners look pretty good. I think the bottom corner did have a very, very, very tiny, tiny, tiny white speck, but I think it would be a strong Beckett candidate. Next is a Justin Herbert a Select Die Cut. This card looks beautiful on the front. <laughs> Looks like a PSA 10 candidate. Whenever I flip it over on the back, you're gonna see how off-centered the card is. But there is a PSA 10 that was recently graded that has a serial number that starts with six that shows that this card in this exact same condition has been graded a PSA 10. So you can see left to right, it's off-centered, top to bottom, is it is what it is, but that's within PSA's threshold. That is within the tolerance. So if this card gets nined, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> I'm really gonna be pissed. It's gonna be not cool. Um, next up, we have uh, Justin Herbert. This card is absolutely off-centered. So this one actually might not submit. Um, left to right, this card is way more off-centered than what I thought it was going to be. Otherwise, this is a beautiful card. Uh, corners are um, Beckett 9.5 quality, I'll at least say that. Um, not sure if I want to... I would love to RCR this card. If I, I would, This is a card that I would love to spend $50, figure out if it's gem mint. And if it is, get it slabbed by Beckett. That's kind of the play. Next is Justin Herbert, <clears throat> score autograph. This is either the gold or orange version, whichever one is numbered to 10. So again, out of Chronicles. Uh, bought a lot of Justin Herbert cards <clears throat> that did not do that well in terms of the condition. So you can see on the surface of this, surface of these Chronicles cards is just pure junk. Like there's little bitty dots kind of everywhere on these, on these cards. So not really sure if I want to PSA this or a Beck at it. Um, again, I'm going to submit it somewhere. I don't know exactly where or who I'm going to submit with, but definitely going to get this card graded by somebody. Um, but yeah, you can see on the back, I'm trying to show you all the back of the card. Back is beautiful, but it's also the serial number. This is serial number three of 10. Um, so yeah, Justin Herbert stuff uh, seems to be picking up a little bit of steam as we get into the playoff or getting into the regular season, especially some of the rare lower numbered things. All right. So next up, I have my three big cards that I'm going to see if I either want to crack out or, or do something with. So first, let me know what you all think. I'm still not sure about this. I'm thinking about PSAing this card, but uh, this is the Steph Curry Lee, or Panini Limited. I want to say Leaf Limited because that's what it was back in the day. Panini Limited Autograph Rookie Jersey. So number to 299. This is not an insert. This is part of the base set. So this is one of his rarest rookies, especially one of his rarest autograph rookies uh, from 20, 2009. Corners look great. You can see I'm investigating that one corner. I think that may be the source of where my nine came from. Very difficult to see as you're going through the cases. Um, we've heard uh, Nat Turner say recently that you know PSA will not cross over cards if they can't really see through the cases, and, and I can certainly see why that is. So, you know, I have fantastic lighting that I'm at right now, or that I have at my disposal. And it's very difficult to see within the, the case itself uh, how the card looks. So this card got a nine on corners and nine on surface. Um, I've seen a lot of Beckett cards that have had way worse corners get nines. Um, so I'm really, really, really wanting to try this card out again because the difference in a nine and a nine five or a nine and a PSA 10 is obviously substantial. So this is one of those cards I would have loved to have cracked out and then RCR'd because I really do feel like I get a, if I get a second opinion on this, I have a, a shot again at getting a nine five. Um, so that's one of the things I would love to have done is, uh, RCR some cards, 
uh, grade the ones that came back Jim Mint. Uh, at least I'm getting an opinion there um, and I can determine what I want to do uh, with that card moving forward, whether or not I want to get it slabbed um, or um, you know, just hang on to it raw or in its RCR label. So that's that. Uh, uh, Steph Curry, uh, camera's getting a little bit out of focus here, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful card. Um, these these cards that are in the slabs, I'm on the fence about. I'm on the fence. Don't really know what I want to do. And again, it's our raw card review. That means I have to crack this card out if I wanted to do RCR. So uh, depending on how the show goes, I'm going to play this by ear, but uh, this is a card that I would absolutely love to have a second opinion on. Next up, this is a card that I will get a second opinion on. This is absolutely BS that I got an 8.5 surface grade on this because I do not know what they're looking at for the surface where they are seeing a scratch, but maybe I missed it. Very well could be that I missed it, but definitely worth having another shot. This is the Shohei Otani Finest Gold Refractor number 52 of 50. Uh, basically a gem mint card outside of a perceived surface problem. So um, as you can see, I'm trying to look and see where the surface issue is. And again, it's really hard, very, very hard. So uh, I really wish that PSA had the crossover service still in play. Um, but unfortunately, they do not have that because these are perfect cards where I'd rather them just crack it out and grade the card. Um, but actually, that would be probably be a bad thing because they would see the card is graded a 9 and that would bias their opinion. So usually, I'm in favor of cracking out um, like I did my order from PSA to Beckett <coughs> recently uh, where every card actually came back a higher grade than the PSA grade. So that card will get graded either by Beckett or PSA. Again, perfect RCR opportunity to potentially get a gold label. Next up, this is by far my most valuable card that I have. For those of you who do not know the story, I'm going to have a separate video on this dedicated to this card, but I'll go ahead and throw it in here. Paid $7,500 for this card in spring training. Shohei Otani is doing Shohei Otani level things. And now the card, uh, at least the pitching variation of this card, just sold through Golden Auctions in Beckett 9510 autograph form for $170,000. This is the batting variation. There's a batting variation on Golden right now, as well as the pitching variation. They're tracking very similarly. I think it's last bit up to 46,000. It's a Beckett 9510 auto. Again, I'm not really happy about the 10 auto or the, having the 9 auto. This is only one of two copies that has a 9 autograph. And again, I've seen way, way, way worse autographs. Just look on eBay, look on. Uh, you know all the different variations blue green base etc you'll see that there are some 10 autographs uh, graded as 10 that are much worse than mine um, but yeah this card to me looks dang near flawless on the very top edge you can see I'm expecting here it looks like there could be a very very tiny 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 imperfection um, Beckett still gave the edge subgrade a 9.5 honestly wonder if they fat fingered it and they were supposed to give the edges a nine and corners nine five because corners to me look flawless uh you can see these very well through the case unlike the uh steph curry that we saw recently so yeah this card is beautiful this is one of those that again i don't know what to do i don't know if i should crack this it takes a lot of balls to crack a card that is you know probably you know well into the five figures and and potentially just shy of six figures takes a lot of stones to do that so but i know this card would do so much better in a psa case so this is one of those situations where i would love to roll the dice and spend one to two thousand dollars with psa and say hey guys this card's great at nine five i will pay you a lot of money let's get this into the psa holder in a psa 10 grade because a psa 10 of this card is probably pushing 150 200 thousand dollars easy easy all day long because there are not that many out there so this is one of those big gambles that i may pull off at the national that i'm not sure about yet you guys let me know what you think down below should i do it should i not do it should i pay the massive fees to see if i can get this card crossed over again i don't even know if they're doing crossover because i do not want them to crack this out and put it in a psa 9 case that is not what i want to happen at all so go, guys, those are the cards I'm going to be submitting. Now I'm going to show you guys the rejects. I'm just showing you this because these are cards I've bought in, and I may have shown some of these cards on the channel. I may not have, uh, but these are all cards that I was like, yeah, man, let's get these graded really, really quick. And then after further inspection, 
they're not very gradable. So uh, just about every single one of these cards has surface issues, um, undetectable. It seems like uh, Top's Finest always has surface issues. There's always something wrong with their cards. They um, just don't do that well whenever they're printing their cards out. This Independence Day Shohei Otani, oh my gosh, I'm so pissed. It only has one flaw. You can see it in the very upper left, or, uh, sorry, upper right corner. It was an edge that is peeled up or peeled back a little bit. So everything else on this card is flawless. Corners, edges, or uh, corners, surface, centering. Just that one edge issue. Uh, guys, look, see if you can find this flaw right here. You guys see that? Man, a massive crease going straight down the middle of the card. Like, are you kidding me? So, uh, very annoyed by that, that people can, again, dump some of these cards like this. So, I usually do not use this type of lighting whenever I'm investigating my cards. I usually, because again, previously, if you look over the past couple of years, you paid 10 to $12 to get a card graded. You really don't need to inspect it that much because if the card comes back a nine and you're submitting, you know, multiple copies, so what? The nines are actually bringing premiums and the tens are, you know, bringing unbelievable premiums. Now, because the the model has flipped a little bit and I'm having to pay so much to get cards graded, you better believe that I'm inspecting every single piece of this card. It's very similar to how it was back in the old days whenever cards were it cost a lot of money or it cost very little to get the cards graded but also the premiums weren't as high as they were so you needed a high gem rate to be profitable now you absolutely need a high gem rate to be profitable because the fees are so high but the premiums are also high so yep that's just a little bit of my grading strategy let me know what you guys think down below if you guys see me at the national say hey what's up i'm hoping to get a lot of content there love to meet a bunch of you guys if you're actually going to make it feel free to stop by and say hi but if you're there i will see you all right peace